Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, it has been quite the year. We've had a ton of cards come out. And yeah, it's very interesting to see, kind of looking back, you know, what some of the cards actually came out this year were, because there's a lot to keep track of. But yeah, on to this episode, I'm going to be taking you through the most popular cards for Commander in 2022. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So we're going to start things off with Archivist of Ogma, which is in 36,254 DAX. That is 9% of eligible DAX according to EDH Rack. A 2-2 Halfling Cleric with Flash that costs 1 and a white and says, whenever an opponent searches their library, you gain 1 life and draw a card. Yeah, in Commander, uh, searching your library happens quite a bit, especially against since it is a multiplayer format, you know, and even if just one opponent cracks an Evolving Wilds, well, that's going to trigger this. Gaining a life, drawing a card for just 2 mana at flash speed, you can get this down, get a lot of card advantage out of it throughout the game, and yeah, especially for mono-white decks that are very much hungering for some card advantage, this is a great solution for them, and that's why, well, they... Well, are utilizing it so much. Archivist of Ogma sees a ton of play, and of course it can help out in a lot of decks outside of just Mono White, but yeah, 36,000 decks to its name, that is a ton. But next up, let's move on to number 9 with Big Score, which sees play in 39,384 decks. That's 7% of eligible decks, actually. And it's in for a 3 and a red that says it shall cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw 2 cards, create 2 treasure tokens. So, yeah, uh, basically the exact same thing essentially as Pirate's Pillage, but at instant speed. And uh, I think Unexpected Windfall is the other one that basically is the exact same thing, but it costs 2 red red. So this one is just the best of all worlds, essentially. Again, instant speed, easy to cast, and yeah, easy to place in a lot of decks out there, clearly. Again, having to discard one card, not that big of a deal. Two cards are coming back, and you get two treasure tokens, some great temporary ramp, temporary, you know, just, uh, again, burst of mana when you need it, essentially. And again, yeah, some ways to essentially, you know, loot and draw. What's not to love about Big Score? A lot of players out there really like this card, and it definitely shows, again, seeing play in nearly 40,000 decks. Yeah. <laughs> But now it's time for us to move on to number 8 with one that is over 40,000 decks with Decanter of Endless Water. At 40,112 decks, that is 4% of eligible decks. And yeah, Decanter of Endless Water can fit into any deck out there again since it is an artifact that is... Well, it doesn't have a color identity, right? Uh, it costs 3, says you have a maximum hand size, tap, add 1 man of any color. Basically, this is Thought Vessel, another reincarnation of it essentially, right? One extra mana, but instead of just tapping for a colorless, this can tap for one mana of any color. Regardless, giving you a maximum hand size is, of course, something a lot of players out there very much like to have in certain decks. And yeah, this is just a very simple and easy way to do it. Throw it on a mana rock, put it in a deck, utilize this to keep your hand around, and also to ramp, you know, again, not as efficiently as you might like, but still efficient enough when it comes to giving you that additional benefit. So you had to canter. Definitely has seen a lot of play ever since it came out. But next up at number 7, it's time to move on to the Tricycling Lands. And though I am showing off every single one of them here, and all of them see a ton of play, I'm just going to highlight the one that sees the most play here, and that is Rafine's Tower. And those numbers are for it. 42,201 decks to its name. That is 30% of eligible decks. And, and yeah, if it was more budget-friendly, I'm sure it would see even more play than that. Regardless, it is a Plains Island Swamp, so yeah, it can tap for any of those colors. And of course, all the other, you know, versions of this essentially, you know, do the exact same thing essentially for their own colors. Regardless, on top of that, Cycling for 3, so a very flexible card. Basically, a Tri-Land that has Cycling stapled onto it as well. And also, again, those basic land types to allow you to, you know, maybe grab this with something like a Farseek. So, yeah, I mean, Rafine's Tower and all these other tricycling lands see a ton of play for a reason and are quite pricey for a reason, too. Again, yeah, 42,000 decks. That is incredible.
Moving on, though, we're at number six, and at sixth place, we've got yet a another land with Secluded Courtyard at 42,219 DAX. That is 3% of eligible DAX. And, yeah, this one, well, sees play for, well, I mean, a reason, because there are a lot of tribes out there that very much enjoy this. That's right, a tribal land enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It can tap for a colorless or can tap to add one man of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or activate an ability of a creature or creature card of the chosen type. So this land does come into play untapped and you can utilize it, you know, for anything essentially for that colorless. But again, if you are in a tribal deck, chances are you've got a ton of that specific tribe. Again, let's say dragons. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of dragons in your deck. So you can utilize this basically again as like a command tower essentially that can just utilize its mana for anything for your dragons, whether that's one of their abilities or again to cast them. So yes, Clued Courtyard, a very popular tribal card and one that can fit into a ton of decks out there. Next up, though, let's move on to number five with Black Market Connections at 44,216 decks. That is 9% of eligible decks according to HREC. An enchantment for two in a black that says, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, choose one or more. Sell contraband, create treasure token, you lose one life. Buy information, draw a card, you lose two life. Hire a mercenary, create a three two color shapeshifter creature token with changeling, you lose three life. This is basically, well, a really souped up version of Rexian Arena. Again, yeah, you're going to pay life to draw cards. Yeah, you're going to pay life to get treasure tokens. Sure, you might even pay life to get a creature token too. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, uh, three life for a card in a treasure token sounds very good to me. There's a reason why this is a ton of play, provides you an incredible amount of value throughout the game. And of course, yeah, you're probably gonna have some ways to actually, you know, either mitigate that life loss by gaining life elsewhere, or just taking your opponents out quicker than they take you out. So yeah, Black Mark Connections, an incredible card, and one that I was not surprised to see make this list. And speaking of not surprised, let's move on to number four with Professional Face Breaker coming in at 45,172 decks. That is 9% of eligible decks. A 2 3 Human Warrior with Menace that costs two in a red and says, whenever one or more creatures you control to accommodate to a player, create a treasure token and sacrifice a treasure, exile the top card of your library, you may play a card this turn. Um, yeah, having the potential to give you three treasures in a turn, again, in a game of Commander, hitting every single opponent, being able to just get that many treasures is incredible, and being able to utilize those treasures, not just for mana, but also being able to utilize treasures for essentially, you know, impulse draw, yeah, there's a reason why this sees so much play, giving you, again, temporary mana, temporary mana advantage, and also temporary card draw in a way with that impulse draw, professional face breaker, you are seeing a lot of play for a reason. And yet another card that I definitely expected to be up here on this list. Farewell, 75,743 decks. That is 13% of eligible decks. This is an incredible board wipe. A sorcery for four white, white, choose one or more. Exile all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, exile all graveyards. This does everything and anything you want it to do. Exiling again gets rid of, well, essentially anything. It's really hard to get around that. And uh, yeah, it's not just destroy, so you can't just regenerate. You can't just, you know, be indestructible to survive it. And this can take out exactly what you need to take out. If you've got a lot of creatures out there, but you probably don't, don't exile creatures. Just exile everything else that you don't want. So yeah, pick the exact pieces that you want. This is an incredibly flexible, perhaps the most flexible board wipe out there that can do the job that you need to do every single time. So yeah, farewell. Yeah, congratulations on your third place finish. But at number two, we've got an uncommon with an offer you can't refuse. Seeing play in 83,514 decks, that is 15% of eligible decks. Yeah, not surprised to see this one up here either. An instant for a blue that says counter target non creature spell, its controller creates two treasure tokens. This is kind of like a swan song ish, essentially, but yeah, I mean. Giving an opponent saying, you know, here's an offer you can't refuse. Uh, and of course, you can say, you know, like the Godfather as well. Probably better than that. But yeah, being able to just counter any non-creature spell for a single mana. Again, more efficient than a negate. 
But yeah, sure, you give them some treasure tokens. That is a deal you are willing to make because, yeah, in the situation that you're in, hey, uh, they're going to cast something really powerful and you're like, you know what? You have your treasure tokens here. I'll just one mana counter that. Take your treasure tokens and utilize them later. Whatever. Doesn't matter. That thing that you wanted to, you know, get through, it's not getting through. Not this time. Again, an offer you can't refuse. And again, please do a better Godfather impression than me, okay? But when it comes to the most popular commander card from 2022, we've got some lands, some more lands in here. Not the tricycling lands, but the channel lands. And the most popular of all of them is Beseju, who endures, though. I mean, other ones are really high up on the list as well. I mean, I think technically Ottawara is number two, and technically, uh, yeah, the Abandoned Mire is number three or four. But yeah, let's just focus on the number one out of these, okay? Beseju, who endures. 111,969 decks to its name. That is 19% of eligible decks, and I can guarantee you if it was more budget-friendly, it would see played more because, my goodness, is this a land. A legendary land that taps for a green channel. Pay one in a green. Discard it. Destroy, target, an artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land opponent controls. That player may search the library for a land card with a basic land type. Put that on the battlefield then shuffle. It's going to cost one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. Um, hey, do you want removal to just come on a land that comes into play untapped and really efficient removal because, uh, yeah, sure, the opponent might get a basic land out of it, uh, but you can just cast this for a single mana most of the time because, sure, if you just even have your commander in play, it's just going to cost a single mana for you. Yeah, this card, it's hard to argue against it going in essentially every mono green deck again outside of budget considerations. And of course, there are a lot of other decks out there outside of Mono Green that really would like to utilize this as well. Of course, there are also ways to you know, get lands back into your graveyard, back in your hand, so you can utilize them again. Yeah, all of these are fantastic, and the green one really stands out, and that's why, again, it is the number one card of 2022. 111,000, absolutely absurd. And yeah, that's the list of the most popular cards from 2022 for Commander. And yeah, now it's my turn here from you, so comment below. Let me know what your favorite card from 2022 is. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.